Hi, hello. Today I'm gonna show you how I draw and paint hair. This is kind of an upgrade of this tutorial I made 6 months ago. But first, a word from our sponsor, Wingfox. Wingfox is an online learning platform for artists, which means you can learn about illustration, character design, or if you're interested in 3D modeling, you can find these courses on Wingfox as well. And the great thing is, you will learn from industry professionals such as art directors, character designers, and concept artists. One of the instructors is Fishman. He is a senior concept designer who will teach you how to level up your digital painting skills. His portfolio is wow. These are god-level artworks. But not to worry, his class is beginner-friendly, he will teach you from the very beginning and share his resources so you too can become an art god. Check out Wingfox, link in the description, and use coupon code WFR15 to get a discount on your purchase. Thank you Wingfox for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about hair. First, references. What kind of references should you look for, especially if you're a beginner? Well, to quote two legendary artists, Angel Ganev and Kulin, the best reference for drawing hair is F-Boys. I'm not joking, they really said it. Here's the thing, to draw the hair, it's important to break down the shape instead of drawing every single strands. Because in real life, we don't see individual hair unless you got up to a person really really close, which is really creepy. F-Boys usually have medium length kinda wavy hair, which I think is perfect for practice because if the hair is too long and straight, you cannot exactly break down the shape because it's just straight lines. Same thing if the hair is too short. If the hair is curly, it can get overwhelming for beginners because there are a lot of planes to break down. That's why F-Boy's hair is easier to break down. It's medium length, not too curly, not too straight, and also F-Boy's hair have the right amount of shine. The hair is not dry, but also not overly shiny to the point it looks oily, so it will be easier for you to practice on. Now, do we really have to use the F-Boy references? Well, not necessarily. As long as the hair has clear shape, not too long, not too short, and those other stuff, feel free to use other references. But honestly, I think it's easier to just look for F-Boys. Okay, let's break down some hair. Now the hair is not like this. No, it's divided like this. At a glance, the hair can look intimidating because it looks complicated and stuff, so I usually divide them based on the flow direction. The red one is flowing to the right, and the green one is flowing to the left, and the blue one is just there to indicate the lower part of the hair. I usually work on one side first and then continue to the other one, this way it wouldn't be too overwhelming to draw. Now obviously this doesn't work for every hairstyle, like for example curly hair. This is just a method that I use for breaking down basic hair. Alright, let's talk shape. The hair is made up from a lot of individual strands. So instead of, I don't know, this flat shape, the hair should be considered a 3D form. In this example, we can see there's a lower layer of the hair. I don't really know the exact term, but this is what gives the hair that 3D look. As you break down the hair, you might figure out that you're actually drawing the same shape over and over. But that doesn't mean you can just copy-paste like this. Some strands might be longer or smaller than the other, but they still have the same shape. Before I color the hair, I usually clean up the sketch with a new layer. I feel like too many lines is distracting during the coloring process, but this is just a personal opinion. Alright, let's get into coloring. Now, I'm just going to focus on the hair, so if the rest of the portrait looks like chicken poop, you know, don't don't judge. First, I started with an airbrush to give it some soft shadow, and then I go with my heart brush. I'm using Blackburn brush, which is already available if you download Procreate. But I did some adjustments for the brush, which I will provide in my community post. Okay, so I usually simplify the hair shading into this, um, shape. I don't know what to call it. And then blur the edges, and added some lines with smaller brush to mimic the hair strands. At this point, you can also paint over your sketch or line art. By the way, in the reference, you can see that the hair is not completely bright on this side. Even if the light source is coming from here, there are also some shadows around this area. That's why it's important to have a reference as a guide, because honestly, if I didn't have any reference right now, I'll just cover his hair with light and he looked like someone dumped glow stick liquid on him. Now I'm using the airbrush to make soft highlights first. I'm using the blending mode 
at I don't know why it's always weird when I say that word at and then I use hard brush to draw stronger lights and again I'm making this shape and draw highlights on the edge of the hair to exaggerate the glow Alright, I've worked on the whole face because I need it for a thumbnail But anyway, now I'm adding little hair strands to the portrait Don't overdo the hair strands though, keep it natural I add the hair strands mostly on the outer parts of the hair And I use soft eraser on the hair tips so it looks more natural Now this is something I see a lot of artists do to their portrait Take the color of the skin and then with a very soft brush, color this area I don't know what it does exactly, but it does look good, so... And lastly, use Sharpen. It should be available for every drawing software. It enhances your painting and gives great texture on the hair. Look at that sexy texture. Mm. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and let me know what you think. Check out Wingfox, link in the description, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!